Pakatai mai koutai, roto i ngā kupu pori o tēnei wā. Pakatai mai koutai, ki tēnei wā mātou ranga o ngā whare puka puka o te whānau whānui o te moana nui a ki wā nau mai, pakatai mai. I roto i tēnei wai. I ngā manu tau... Te pō, te a, te a, te pō. Te hahaunga, te kimihanga. I te kore, i te kore nā tāne i toko. Nā nā i mā wehe tau wehe ai, ka hiu a te pō. Te rā i a ngā hua, ka mā turu turu i hō nei. Mai a e rangi e tū nei, mai a e papa e takoto nei, mai a te uru ora. Ka heo a te ao, ka heo a te pō, nā tāne i toko ti he wā mauri ora. E ngā manu taupua o te rangi i tī koke koke tanga, nau mai, hara mai, pakatau mai. E mihi nui nui ka koutou e hakarau i ka mai, a tinana, a rorohiko, tēnā koutou katoa. E te mumure o te whenua nei, te reo karanga, ki a tātou katoa, e hui hui mai nei, ka hononga e koe, te ao wairua, te ao kiko kiko, tēnā koe. E te rangatira, e Winston, nau i apo apo, mai ngā kai kōrero, nā rātou, mā rātou, e haka mārama atu ngā kaupapa nui o te ao, tēnei te mihi atu ki a koe. Kia koutou katoa e noho, e noho pai nei, ka haka rongo rongo, ka tau patu patu, ka whiria ngā whakaro, ka fiti fiti ngā kōrero, Tēnei te mihi mai oha ki a koutou katoa, kei raro i te rohe o āhia me te moana nui a kiwa, nau mai, piki mai, kake mai, pakatau mai rā. Kōkiri, 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 Akarongo ake au ki ngā reo o te motu e karanga mai ana hua kina, hua kina te whare. Ka oti, ka oti ngā mahi e, haere mai te iwi ki a pirita ua ki a ki te atu ai ngā kupu whakairi e. E nei ngā wariu o ngā mahi tuinga, e mahi ketu ketu ngā whakaro rereke. Ko hanga hokatu, ngā ria ki te iwi. E kore e mimiti, e puna wai rua e. E puna wai rua e. Nō reira, rātou ki a rātou, tātou ki a tātou. Kia whai te tihi o ngā pai maunga, ka maea, ka pūrea, ngā hau o tāwhiri mātea kia tātou e noho pai nei, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, hurirauna i te ao, tēnā tātou katoa. Kā ia. Thank you. 
Good evening, colleagues. Welcome to the National Library of New Zealand and welcome particularly on behalf of Lianza, the Library Association of New Zealand, Aotearoa. Welcome to the webinar on libraries and the sustainable development goals. The first thing I have to do, because this is a library, this is a government building, and this is a question of public safety, I have to obviously thank our colleagues for their welcome. And before we proceed any further, I have to actually advise our small audience here in the auditorium <laughs> about safety arrangements. And if there is a fire alarm, you need to go out of the auditorium, exit the building, into the Aiken Street outside, turn left and go down the footpath across the lane. In the event of an earthquake, assume the brace position by leaning forward in your seat and don't exit the building when the shaking stops. Uh, stay where you are and wait for instructions. This is a safe, strong building. It stands up to earthquakes. In the event of any other alert or emergency, stay calm and await instructions from library staff. And facilities are outside in the corridor. Okay, that's my legal obligation, I think, uh, done. And again, welcome to this webinar. This is uh, something we do in the regional section every year. Well, we have until recently. After the business meeting of the regional committee, meeting in one or other country of the region, we have a half day seminar run by, hosted by the association of the host country. Well, last year we couldn't do that. This year we've, we've brought back the tradition, but obviously we cannot meet together in person. So we're doing it virtually and taking advantage of the facilities offered by this wonderful new technology, which is sometimes a little bit confusing. So the first thing, the next thing I need to do is introduce you to the first of our speakers, Tina Young, who is the chair of the regional section committee of IFLA. Tina is in Hong Kong. And I think, I hope Tina is ready to come in. Yes, I'm here. Thank Are you, you there, Winston? Tina? Yes. Okay. Can you can you hear me? Mark, can we have volume more volume, please? Can you hear me now? More. More. Okay. How about now? No, right, no. It's the technician who needs to raise the volume. And Mark, can I have? Tina on the screen here, please. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. All right, so, Tina. Yep. Welcome. Thank you, Winston. Good afternoon and good evening. Distinguished guests, colleagues, friends from Asia and Oceania and other parts of the world. I would like to start by wishing you and your families my very best wishes for your health and safety in these difficult times. I would also like to express my profound gratitude to the Library and Information Association of New Zealand, Otara, and the National Library of New Zealand for organizing the webinar. As Winston has mentioned, this is a, uh, the international seminar to accompany the midterm meeting of the EFLA Regional Standing Committee for Asia and Oceania held this morning. Different from our previous seminars, this is held online and also has a much larger audience from different geographic areas and cultural backgrounds. Not only that, but the theme of the webinar on libraries and SDGs is also of paramount importance, especially at the time of pandemic. Across 17 SDGs, access to information 
is a priority. Libraries as information sector provide access to the internet and information resources, promote open access and open science, and develop users' digital skills, including information literacy and other emerging digital literacies, such as media literacy, data literacy, communication literacy, etc. As such, libraries are already contributing to the progress towards the achievement of the 17 SDG. Moreover, libraries have, have been partnering with government, NGO, international organizations, and other stakeholders to advocate SDGs at national, regional, and international levels. However, the pre-existing digital divides are further widening during the COVID-19 pandemic and will more than ever turn into education divide, social and economic divide. To bridge the gap, it is particularly important to enable everyone to get online, find the relevant content, and is equipped with the needed digital skills. And today's webinar, five distinguished speakers will share, will share their insights and experience about how libraries can contribute to the attainment of SDGs globally and in intensely populated countries of mainland Asia, such as Singapore and India, as well as the smaller, widely dispersed population of the Pacific, Pacific such as Fiji, New Zealand. Last but not the least, you may have known that the IFLA Asia and Oceania section will be upgraded to become a regional division. Under the IFLA new structure, we will continue to promote and facilitate the development of library and information services and the library, library profession within the region, closely in line with the IFLA strategy 2019 to 2024. So without further ado, I'm looking forward to the next two exciting hours and hope you all will enjoy yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tina. Now, this evening's keynote presentation will be given by Loida Garcia Febo, who is from Puerto Rico, from the United States, from the Caribbean, and Luida is uh, a very well-known advocate, uh, particularly in IFLA, particularly in the USA, because she has been the chair of the American Library Association, and particularly in, in many regions around the world where she has given presentations on the Sustainable Development Goals. She is a convinced, dynamic, and engaging advocate for this UN program. And this is the first time, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first time we have managed to get her into the Pacific. I was going to say to make a splash, but um, perhaps uh, <laughs> that's the wrong image. But no, um, we, we want her to make a splash because the SDGs are an important program in the Pacific, they are important to people who's, who notice the seas le sea levels rising around them. They're important to those concerned by climate change. Uh, we know that Loida has addressed these issues to our library colleagues in Latin America. She's given talks in the uh, Middle East, Mediterranean in Europe, and uh, North and South, uh, both North and South America. And this is the first time I think that she has done that for people in the wider Asia Oceania region. So we're all looking forward to your talk, Loida, and welcome to New Zealand virtually. And now it's over to you. Greetings, everyone. Thank you for the welcoming words. And I thank you as a woman of Puerto Rican 
indigenous heritage as well, the Tainos. I also want to thank the leadership of the IFLA in Asia and Oceania section and Lianza for the invitation and the National Library of New Zealand, Aotearoa. <coughs> I will now share my screen. Libraries are experiencing a great momentum. We are in the decade of action. The United Nations 2030 agenda guides the development efforts of countries around the world. IFLA is leading efforts for libraries, which is of utmost importance now that we are all experiencing inequalities painfully brought up to light by COVID-19. COVID-19 is a force for grassroots change. The world needs libraries. The world is facing huge challenges in the areas of connectivity, climate change, hunger, poverty, health, sustainability, gender, different types of security. I always say that by working together, we can help to save the world. Libraries are partners for development. We can help tackle those challenges and help to end poverty, protect the planet, and improve the lives and prospects of everyone, everywhere. The SDGs were adopted in September 2015 during the United Nations General Assembly in New York which I attended as part of a group of librarians that for several years advocated on behalf of IFLA for access to information to be included in the SDGs and culture, education, and ICTs, information and communication technologies. So they were adopted on 2015 and established in January, 2016. IFLA led efforts with a global team and presented the first program by libraries at the United Nations together with journalists, and I represented IFLA. All resulted in the inclusion of access to information on Goal 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, specifically on Target 16.10. A huge success. This is proof of what we can achieve when we work together in concerted action, in multi-sectorial partnership. This is advocacy. Why we should care that our libraries offer services and help communities achieve the SDGs? Because access to information, which is at the core of what we do, is a cross-cutting issue that impacts every area in our planet, communities, and societies. Success in any one area can depend on actions in others. There are cross-cutting drivers of development. Therefore, information matters in SDG delivery. In short, the role of librarians on implementation of sustainable development Access to information is the development accelerator. We librarians are unlocking development. IFLA supports that libraries provide access to information that enables people to create, innovate, take better decisions. It enables better policy making and allows for international research collaboration. Then, how can we implement the SDGs into our library priorities? How can we align them? Use the SDGs to think through the different ways you can and do make a difference and use them as a basis for thinking through potential partnerships, as a basis for thinking about indicators of impact on your communities. All libraries, are contributing to the SDGs. We must connect the dots and see 
what we are doing and what the corresponding SDG is. Let's see some examples per goals. And as I mentioned them, think about your library services, how to expand, change, adapt. Related to goal three, good health and well-being. Books on prescription from Australia is helping people to manage well-being with self-help reading. About goal 15, life on land. Librarians in Alaska are helping to save the area's biodiversity, identifying bats in danger of spread. And here they are, those people I met are saving our planet. Librarians in Singapore are hosting the first green library for kids. San Juan Planets in Honduras provides clean water to the town through the well in the library premises. I will pause on goal five, achieving gender equality and empowering all women and girls. Girls Who Code, more than 15% of these programs in the USA are in libraries. It speaks about the commitment to closing the inequality gap in tech. In Australia, libraries are hosting fairs for local entrepreneurs, including women. Queen's Library in New York is providing salary negotiation boot camps for women to help them learn how to level the playing field at work. New Zealand National Library programming empowers women, and this is also an excellent model for girls. New Zealand libraries celebrate women's suffrage movement and the right to vote. About goal 10, reducing inequalities. Libraries are helping to reduce inequalities in many ways. One way by providing civic spaces open to all. Libraries from the National Library Board in Singapore are bringing books to people that cannot go to the library. Los Angeles Public Library is providing information to help immigrants understand their new country. They also provide more than 900 online classes, free, and a program to obtain a high school diploma. Academic libraries in the USA are following an initiative from the Association of College and Research Libraries to increase financial literacy to help students manage their finances. Public libraries in Australia have established a one card program providing access to more than 130 libraries. Libraries in New York and Massachusetts are taking time to know their communities, to provide what they need and to tackle food insecurity for students, the homeless and families. Public library in Texas provides I cards that are used by community college students. A library in Ohio provides kiosks to obtain driver's licenses. And finally, I would like to take a moment to share examples from IFLA in the area of Goal 10, reduce inequalities. With the team from the IFLA Continuing Professional Development and Workplace Learning Section, CPBWL, and the IFLA New Professionals, we coordinated and moderated librarian supporting universal broadband to continue providing essential services to communities everywhere. And open access in libraries, lessons from COVID-19 and our path towards the future. Both are available on the CPDWL YouTube channel. With the team from IFLA Latin America and Caribbean section, and Reforma, the National Association to Promote Library and Information Services to Latinos and the Spanish speaking, we coordinated and moderated copyright considerations in COVID 19 times in insertion with the SDGs. That's available on the Reforma YouTube channel. Now, I would like to take a moment to ask you to save the date because we have together from home, library strong on March 23 
and Together from Home, Brave Librarians on April 14, with more conversations with the goal of reducing inequalities. All the library services speaking to the SDGs can be used to advocate for libraries, to show the impact of libraries in communities and to support advocacy to promote transformative policy. It is important that we are creative in developing metrics to attract programs to demonstrate how we are changing lives and the impact of libraries. We can show to governments that they do not want to miss opportunities to help communities throughout libraries because not investing in libraries has a cost, harming communities. Lack of literacy programs will limit participation in society, which can result in economy losses when people are unable to realize their potential. Lack of space to welcome community groups would exclude individuals. This is negative for social cohesion. Spaces for inclusion are lost. Lack of internet access and devices will result in losing key parts of digital infrastructure, access to e-government, jobs information, business opportunities, and e-commerce is affected too. Advocacy is key. Library stories, like those you might have sent to the IFLAS Library Map of the World and library associations can be included in national government development strategies and share with donors and supporters. And they can help when decision makers talk about the SDGs. In your advocacy, the SDGs can be an opportunity for engagement, a common language and reference point, a way of structuring your arguments. How will you advocate? Advocacy is a priority to impact policy and to help others realize the potential of libraries and information in supporting COVID-19 response and recovery. If like supporting libraries in this area. To advocate for the increase in connectivity, IFLA developed the Pledge for Digital Inclusion, which sought to promote digital inclusion and access to information during COVID-19 and beyond. IFLA advocates at WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization for Copyright and Fair Licenses Policies for digital content to facilitate access to information, not only temporary, but for long term. All these efforts relate to information social justice, giving everyone the possibility to use information effectively. Advocacy, again, we are all contributing from where we are. How can you adapt efforts to your country or region? Libraries are located in the center of communities. In many ways, we are responding to the needs of excluded groups, vulnerable, historically disadvantaged. This is why it is so important for us to embed multicultural, multilingual, multi-ethnic principles. Adapt the SDGs to your reality, country, region. IFLA asked library associations around the world to join in a global effort uh, to highlight how libraries contribute to the SDGs. And ALA responded, I chair the ALA United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals Task Force to develop a multi-year strategic plan to increase participation by libraries in efforts to achieve the goals. I'd like to invite you to visit our website. As part of our work, John Shabo, director of Los Angeles Public Library and a member of the task force, created a chart matching their programs and services with the goals. He is using the chart to advocate for LAPL with the mayor and the city council. We can show how libraries impact communities and the value of libraries, the return on investment from government. We need uh, support from the government, politicians, donors, to fund libraries and to adopt transforming policies to continue 
helping fulfill the potential of access to information to create a better world for all. And I'm going to take a moment to share that the task force presented a webinar with Australian, German, and French library associations, sharing stories in, uh, of libraries, and the recording is available on the website. We have also collaborated with the Russian Federation of Libraries and the Chinese Library Journal. We created various charts and um, to show how libraries are helping communities achieve development. And today, earlier today, I unveiled new free downloadable resources that libraries can customize. A chart that can be customized with their services per SDG, bookmarks libraries can customize, and a poster about libraries and the SDGs, which they can also customize with the logo and library name. They are all available free on our website. And it started today, just a few hours ago. Everything mentioned today is part of change. Change is not an isolated occurrence. Change is ongoing. We cannot bring change one time. Change is the result of concerted actions by leadership and collaborations. It should be a core part of what we do always. COVID-19 is a force for change and an opportunity to show uh, the potential to change libraries, our professions, the communities, the world. What changes your community, your region's libraries need? Libraries are powerful. Therefore, it is important to keep in mind points mentioned today. Libraries can reach everyone, meet the information needs of individuals, help develop skills needed now and for a post-pandemic world, partnered effectively to serve communities, impact communities, impact policies, and we must work to demonstrate our value impacting communities. In closing, my recommendations. Our strategy needs to be a long-term agenda for response and work. To leave no one behind, we need to change paradigms, collaborating across sectors, we need to promote policy transformation, support multi-sectorial partnerships, that's key, embrace efforts at multi-dimensional processes, and we must secure a place at the table where policy discussions happen to convey the value of our proposals, the value of libraries. With the SDGs as our guide, we libraries and librarians must unite as a global community to build forward better from the COVID-19 pandemic and recover justly and fairly, ensuring everyone can reach their full potential. We ought to harness a main opportunity intrinsically related to the SDGs rooted in our current reality of the pandemic and take action. This is the time for library associations, libraries, and librarians to work together with IFLA as a unifying global library field to place libraries in a position to significantly transform societies and communities around the globe during the pandemic while the world recovers from it and after. I am absolutely convinced that librarians of the world working together in concerted action with cohesive leadership, we can do this because libraries equal hope. Thank you very much, Lorita. Gracias. Another. Now, I just would like to pause briefly to ask if any of the people in the room have any thoughts or questions that they might like us to ask Luida, or maybe to record 
for the proceedings of the meeting. But if not, then I think we will move straight on to the next uh, speaker. And I don't quite know if Ella Chica is, has, uh, Mark, have you got Ella's presentation? Luida, sorry to keep you waiting there. Thank you again. We, I think we may have a technical problem getting the speaker from Fiji onto our screen. Not responding, no. Okay, we'll make a quick change. We will take Paula Eskett from New Zealand next. If the technician is ready to, to give us Paula and Paula's presentation. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can probably go to Paula. Okay, we'll we'll move straight to Paula. And if Ella comes in, we'll take her presentation some sometime uh, soon after. We'll move to Paula and then Jean and then Ramesh and then Ella. Okay, Paula. Over to you. This is Paula Eskett, former president of Lianza, the Library Association of New Zealand Aotearoa. And the floor is hers. Thanks, Winston. Kia ora koutou, ko o mako te moangana, ko mata o te awa, ko Bert te hapu, ko Lauren Rato, ko Hannah, ko Jared Aku Tamareki, ko Paula Iskett tōku ingoa, nō o tutahi ahau. Hei kai mahi ahau ki Waimakariri District Council, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. I'd like to say thanks to, to IFLA, particularly Winston, for inviting me and Lianza for hosting. It's great to be back in the IFLA space, even if it is, if it is remote. In 2019, Aotearoa New Zealand contributed our first voluntary national review, demonstrating our national commitment and progress towards the United Nations 2030 Agenda. Sustainable and inclusive development was central to our government's agenda, with a move towards a well-being budget and measuring progress against social, economic and environmental indicators. Significant to this had been a shift in governmental direction away from a simple focus of gross domestic product to now incorporate environmental and social factors as well as economic indicators. The well-being of people and communities is at the heart and centre of our government's vision, which aligns succinctly with the mission and purpose of public libraries in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Economic growth and social inclusion are independent, and all New Zealanders should have equal opportunities to participate in and contribute to communities and our economies. New Zealanders see our public libraries as hubs of community and social well-being, cultural institutions, memory institutions, and participatory learning centres. Lianza and public libraries across Aotearoa New Zealand are using the possibilities and opportunities afforded by the equity building power of the SDGs to promote a valuable library advocacy framework to community to communicate demonstrate and share and socialize the successes of our community to our communities stakeholders elected representatives and government we are gathering our stories of impact 
of the value proposition of libraries to bring to life many of the SDGs and how libraries serve communities in terms of social, economic and cultural well-being. With 65% of SDGs only being only able to be achieved with local action and knowing the power of libraries to contribute so much, we need to be telling the best stories. New Zealand is a team of 5 million with libraries and librarians woven into the fabric of our communities. You can see some statistics on the screen beside you. For the next few minutes, I'd like to take you on a whirlwind tour of some of our public library SDG stories. You might like to think of this as speed dating New Zealand's SDG stories. A seed bank is a place for the community to exchange their spare vegetable, fruit and plant seeds that supports and promotes domestic and community food growing. At Waimakariri Libraries, all three libraries of the district offer their communities free seed banks within the libraries. Local schools upcycled old styles, old style school desks, repairing and repainting them to use them as seed banks. The initial collection of seed envelopes was created by children at after school care programs from withdrawn library magazines and newspapers. The concept of a seed bank, banking, making a seed deposit, withdrawal, and taking seeds home. But our seed banks will also take an IOU. They were started in 2019, this collaborative partnership between a local government education provider and libraries. And then it extended to include two food swap community groups, encouraging key gardeners of all ages to think about how they can share the excess garden produce. In 2020, food security was identified as a significant gap by local social services in COVID-19 surveys within the Waimakariri community and became a priority to the district's COVID-19 recovery. Waimakariri, Waimakariri libraries have extended the seed banks to include in their libraries sow-and-go stations where you can plant up free seeds and donated potting mix from a local hardware store and donated containers. And the summer reading challenge this year included prizes and incentives that supported and encouraged home growing produce. Te Aka Māori stands as a place of well-being and understanding, recognizing the importance of health and knowledge for all. Te Aka Māori incorporates a library and a children's health hub, a collaborative health and wellbeing project in Rotorua, New Zealand. It offers untold opportunities for learning, inspiration, education and health for the community and visitors to the district now and into the future. A whakatoki, which is a Māori pr proverb, guided the project making, the project making decision. Ka ora tama iti pua pua, ki a mauri pai te whānau, ki ora te hapu pūmanawa, ki a whakapurawai te iwi. When the child is safe, if the family blossoms, the hapu will flourish. When the hapu flourishes, the people will prosper. Auckland Libraries Wahini Make Action was a series of do-it-yourself events in the Wahini Take Action program. The idea behind the events were to help combat a community-led solution to period poverty. One, th one third of women in Aotearoa will experience at a time in their lives when they cannot afford menstrual products. This affects education and, contribute, and, and contributions of women to society. The program included make your own reusable menstrual pad tutorials in the library and highlighted the need both in the homeless community, but also wider society. 
It also workshops also encourage donations of single-use menstrual items for those women living in precarious situations. Auckland Libraries have worked hard with a woman with Woman Care Trust to bring to life a photographic exhibition that displayed histories of migrant Punjabi women. The local South Auckland charity provides free support to Indian women and other new migrants to Aotearoa. Auckland Libraries worked with Woman Care Trust and the photographic archive, lending photographic equipment and drew on the inspiring oral histories of the migrant Punjabi woman. Then Auckland Libraries facilitated documentation of Punjabi women's voices and is now the repository for their stories and photographic archive of the trust to be preserved in perpetuity as part of the Auckland Libraries project, Auckland Stories project. The project made the Punjabi community aware of Auckland Library's offerings beyond books. The event featured in local Punjabi media and the awareness that was raised was very important because that community did not engage much with library services. Another Auckland story, Auckland, a study into the experience of people living rough on the streets of Auckland New Zealand's biggest city revealed that the homeless community valued the central library as a safe space. Library staff worked with local community groups to identify how library spaces and resources could be best used to support these vulnerable members of our community. As a result, the library now offers a weekly book group where not having a fixed address is not a barrier to borrowing books. They host a movie morning weekly with a morning tea, which participants can select the DVD from the library's collection and the library obtains the license to screen it free of charge. In addition to this, Auckland Libraries established a media club enabling participants to blog about life on the streets to increase and grow awareness in the wider community of what these people face. And a human library event was, a was run which enabled people to book time with someone living on the streets to hear their stories firsthand hand, in a bid to break down stereotypes, grow compassion and empathy. Wellington City Libraries, in collaboration with the Mal Wellington Migrant Communities and Department of Internal Affairs Translation Service, are working towards translating library promotional and informational materials into many of the 30 plus languages spoken by new New Zealanders who have chosen to live in the Wellington region. This is contributing to breaking down barriers to integration within the community and increasing access to local community resources. With no cash involved, Local craftspeople of the Waimakariri district, sewers, knitters and the like, can bring along their unwanted fabric, haberdashery, buttons, wool, lace, sewing patterns, craft, paints, brushes, zips and all other craft stash that they have at home and trade it for free with other crafters. Kaiapoi Library will be accepting clean donations a week before the stash swap and then host it during Saturday opening hours. The proposal for the establishment of a dedicated prayer room in the Dunedin City Library originated from young Muslim women wanting a quiet and secluded place to pray. Initially, the young women were part of the Red Cross Homework Group, which operated weekly in the City Library and was established for former Syrian refugees who had settled in Dunedin. Over several years since the initial resettlement, the number of Muslim families in Dunedin has steadily increased. Unlike most religions, Islam prescribes that a devout Muslim must pray five times a day, five times each day at specific times and in a prescribed way. The city library had no suitable spaces for this purpose, nor were there appropriate spaces readily available in the Dunedin inner city. 
The development of a dedicated prayer space in the Dunedin City Library is consistent with the role of the Dunedin Public Libraries as a community space that is safe and welcoming and aims to meet the diverse Dunedin community irrespective of gender, economic status, sexual orientation or religion. The public library is a vibrant space which needs to reflect and represent the changing demographics and diversity of Dunedin's community. The development of the prayer space in the city library also aligned with the objectives of Dunedin's social well-being strategy. Cons currently consultations are due to close and finalising and confirming usage protocols of the space are underway. In parallel, they have constructed a space within Dunedin City Library, which is approximately 30 square metres and is divided into two spaces with equal, uh, equal size 15 metre squares, spaces with adequate lighting, ventilation, a door, frosted glass and windows. The space is located in the highly visible and easily accessible area of the City Library. Bernie Hawke, Library's manager, who kindly shared the prayer room photo and wrote the script for this story, shared that the development of this space is aligned with the UN SDGs, particularly SDG 16. Peace, justice and strong institutions, as well as the basic values of public libraries for free and equitable access. The SDGs are so much more than a static document. For libraries, they are a powerhouse of advocacy and harness community ideas, initiatives and inspiration that target and generate solutions and can help address local issues at a local level in collaboration. Our communities want to collaborate and want to be and need to be part of their solutions. They want to do, do with us not to us. Study after study, librarians and libraries are ranked amongst the public's most trusted institutions. Our service mission, without commercial motive, support for freedom of intellectual freedom, with visible community engagement. Combine this with librarians' consistent commitment to public good and demonstrating our role and place in our communities and our way, the way we advocate for our people. The primary branding object of libraries has long been the book, with some challenging that at this time in history, that people have replaced the book as libraries' primary branding object. Perhaps the book is now our secondary branding object. Public libraries are an equitable platform for citizen-to-citizen -citizen projects and services through our publicly funded spaces, collections, technology and staff. These stories I have shared are the tip of the iceberg, demonstrating the power of libraries to support community development and bring to life the vision of many of the SDGs. We can make a sustainable difference locally nationally and internationally if we do it together. E hara, takutoa, e te toa, takitahi, he toa, takitini. My strength is not as an individual, but as a collective. Kia ora, thank you. Thank you very much, Paula. That was an excellent presentation. I learned a lot, and even though I come from the South Island, I learned a lot. <laughs> um, colleagues, we have a small technical problem. Um, our, our friend Ella from Fiji is has a power failure where she is living at the moment, and she can't do the presentation at the moment. Uh, so we are switching her to the end of the program and we hope that her power will come back and if so we will bring her in at the end but it's not guaranteed 
So we will carry on and the next speaker will be Jean Tan from Singapore, from the National Library Board, if he's ready, because this is a surprise to him to be in this order. Jean, are you there? Yes, and I'm never surprised since then. <laughs> Good. <laughs> should I start to share screen? Yes, I should. Okay, just give me a minute. Go, go. <laughs> yes, go. Hi, everyone. Hello, you can't hear me. I'm sorry, you can't respond to me. I just want to say a big thank you to the standing committee of the IFLA section of Asia Oceania. Uh, Tina, a very good afternoon to you. To Lienza and to the National Library of New Zealand. Oh God, I wish I were there. I tell you what, I just finished a 500 page book uh, on Peter Jackson's filming experience in New Zealand. And I really can't wait to be there. So to the people of Lienza, could you find an excuse once you've all been vaccinated to bring me to New Zealand, I will be ever so grateful and I'll come bearing lots and lots of gifts. But first of all for today, to take a leave from what um, Loida, my good friend Loida was saying about getting a place at the table, this is what my presentation is about. It all started in December 2019, but at that time we thought it was a localized incident. But just a year ago from now, we realized that it was actually a global phenomenon. I'm talking about COVID-19. And we all woke up to a very different world. So my little chat today, I know I only have 10 minutes, is about the future. Uh, it's about the future in the light of the SDG goals, but that is also about the future of a brave new world that the library can build as a national platform for a post-pandemic world. So I'm gonna take 10 minutes to go through this. And if you guys find any of these ideas interesting, please pop a question to me at Q&A and I'll go through uh, a little bit more slowly. So first of all, we have a look at all the trends. I think you guys are so sick of this, right? You've seen this in so many forms in all the national papers, local papers, and uh, you've seen the impact it has for libraries. Are there opportunities, headwinds, or are there tailwinds? So what do we do about all these? What it really means is that we've noticed that the haves have more in a very biblical way. The have-nots, even the little they have, will be taken away from them. So recently I did a pitch because it's all about having a place at the table and uh, like, like I think the previous speaker talked about, it's also about a platform. So recently I did a pitch to a very powerful person in Singapore. He's the head civil service, which means he is the boss of all the public servants in Singapore. And I said, can you think of the library as something else? Can we be a national platform for the whole of government to reach the whole of nation? But first of all, I wanted to look at some examples of people who have done actually fairly well, Amazon and Netflix. I'm not sure if you all have these in your countries, but I looked at Jeff Bezos' idea of the virtual cycle, and I was very intrigued. But his virtual cycle is to lower the price of the goods that are on there. But with more customers, you increase the sales. With more sales, you get more sellers on board. With more sellers, the cost per product will actually go down. Well, it's a little bit insidious and maybe not quite the library's uh, role in the world, but we'll talk about that later. And then I looked at Netflix which um, I have been addicted to. And I looked at how they present themselves, the recommendation model. I had no idea that more than 80% of content you stream through Netflix is actually off recommendations. So it's actually off things that you push. And a lot of the content is not even from Netflix. It's actually syndicated. I thought, hey, this is something that we could do. So what does that mean for libraries? So this is the idea. Can we create the library as a netflix -ish learning superstar that adapts the virtual cycle of Amazon to be a force for good for all. Okay, how would that work? So looking at the virtual cycle agglomeration, we turn Amazon's model on its head. So looking at many users that libraries have, and in NLB Singapore, National Library of Singapore, we have a massive user base. And most of our libraries have that because it's generations and generations of goodwill. But with these many users, can we bring more partners and their content onto the library's platform. And with more content, get more users. With more users, get more partners. I can get a drift. And then what about Netflix? So if you build in this almost formidable base of content that can come from many, many different partners and not just what we license, not just what we subscribe to, not just what we purchase, what can we do? I've been very disturbed by Facebook and I've been very disturbed by the social media's algorithm takes in this ever-narrowing echo chamber. So what if we can inspire users to embark on something that helps them to go a little wider 
a little deeper and to have a more expansive view of the world. So I'm thinking of the cocktails of uh, things like algorithms from Amazon Web Services. That's something that I think National Library is working on, using things like neural networks and machine learning to be able to draw materials in a way to do this expansion. And all the things that librarians have been famous doing throughout the generations, cataloging, meta tagging, linked open data. But what about Spotify? What if librarians can also learn a little bit from Spotify and we can start to create playlists of items that are shareable, whether it's by librarians, archivists, experts, users, and communities. So with these two in mind, we create a massive platform of content that is accessible to everyone. And at the same time, when you hit this platform, you benefit from this ever widening journey so that hopefully the world will be made out of people with a broader perspective instead of just a singular perspective. So that is idea number one. So idea number two is entry point. So you build this massive platform. Do we always expect people to be able to come to our platform? There was a film that I watched many years ago by Kevin Costner, uh, Feel of Dreams. And there was a line there that said, if you build it, they will come. I absolutely disagree. I love Kevin Costner, but I absolutely disagree with that statement. It does not work this way. So for those that find it hard to come, how can we innovate our entry points? So we are thinking of things where the entry points can go to places where people find it very hard to get to us. So we go to the natural habitats, we work on amplification or impact based on those entry points and with a high socialization objective so that they get used to a li the library going experience. So some of the examples, these are more traditional, like having a pop-up pop -up library but less traditional is the library as a wallpaper. Uh, everyone has handphones these days. In Singapore, a lot of people have handphones that are used to, uh, to use uh, the QR codes to enter buildings to register their entrance. So what if we can imagine a library as a piece of paper that can be applied to any surface, any surface at all? It's cheap, but also it gives you access to a lot of digital materials. And then we think of some of the elements like, you know, try outs, like little libraries that have their own cell service, walk-in, walk-out service, book dispensers. Yes, yeah, quite traditional. But then library takeovers. So remember what I said about Spotify later. So what if the library, the paper library, can be taken over at any time by an activist or by anyone with a, uh, with a long history of activism to look at the readings and the materials that this person is inspired by? Uh, it could also be a famous person. So it could be a President Obama, it could be Oprah Winfrey, or anybody who is super famous wherever you come from. Uh, it could be Nicole Kidman. So having this apply anywhere on the island, or anywhere in the world, and you can access this person's inspiration and you can share that person's inspiration. Amplifiers, working with different groups. So if library is a platform, can it connect to all these other groups with social uh, presence and to leverage their audience to bring them to the library. And socialization, with all of these elements, we can bring the library in a very light and nimble way to all of these locations, including for Singapore, the industrial estates where the migrant worker dormitories are. It could be a fun, exciting way for them to get used to the idea of coming to a library. But I really don't think that's groundbreaking. So this is idea 2.2B, and it is adapted a little bit from uh, uh, Intel Insight. So I'm sorry about that. That is the Intel logo. So imagine if you remove the word Intel and you put NLB, which is the National Library Board, or you can just call it Library Insight. Imagine applying it in an XML, XL sort of method. Those of you who are into architecture will realize this is actually Ram Kuhars, this famous architect. So if you can do this, what you can do is you can apply this to any surface, any platform with the use of QR and AR codes to be able to get used to library content. I'll just give you two examples. So for instance, uh, the M size nano node, this could be applied to any painting that you see. So whether it's the National Gallery, the country, the museums, and with this access, you are able to access even more information or even the video. It can be applied to a bench or it could be a bench itself uh, anywhere in the parks. And you could get a playlist, an audio playlist telling you about the importance of sustainability or about the tree that's right next to you. And the other model, let's talk about XL. What if it's an installation? What if you have a tree of books? So in the tree of books, so instead of just planting trees, you could plant 
uh, book trees. And every book tree is an access to bookstores, access to a material that you can, you can look at to enhance your understanding of all these key issues in the world. Okay, so it's idea number three for my last four minutes. So idea number three is, we have worked out this superstar learning that the library can be transformed to become, to be a force for good. We have all these entry points to get to this superstar learning. Now, what else can we do? What about the physical libraries? I'm also thinking about information, education, and experience. So let me just take you through this. We have been talking a lot about passing on information about key issues, the things that keep us awake at night. But telling people about issues may not always work. How do you get them to experience the issues? So in Singapore, we sometimes feel that um, the young are not very interested in issues. They're interested in uh, lifestyle, you know, the next Instagram star, or putting the best TikTok video that they can find. Uh, and there's this stereotype that they don't care. But we've come to realize through a little experiment that I did just a couple of years ago, that it is the format, silly. And what is the format? So a lot of people thought that Singaporeans are not interested in history at all. So just about two years ago, we created something called the Bicentennial Experience. So it was using uh, effects, water, sound, as well as the whole theater experience put into a mechatronic form. And people who came got very excited about history. A lot of people who said they don't care about history, they care about livelihood. They got very, very excited. So these are just some examples of the things that they said, you know, that they don't feel intimidated by information and it catches the intention and it keeps you engrossed in that. So what does that mean for SDG? So in the post-pandemic world, uh, we realize that a lot of things we can take from the pandemic itself. So when COVID is trying to tell you something, what do you do? So in Singapore, we've created something called Singapore Together Alliances for Action. I'll just call it AFA for short. So these are action networks that pull together government, communities, and organizations to launch experimentation. And they cover a large number of issues that are in the SDG. So one of the big ones is the Singapore Green Plan 2030. Uh, there are several elements in it, uh, which includes uh, our responsibilities for carbon uh, emission and stuff like that. The whole idea is that there are all these big issues and big plans going on. What do we do about it? I am here to propose the library as a platform to experience issues. How do we do that? So this is uh, one idea, the library as a theater of issues. So instead of just a library of books, can we have a theater that showcases people and the solutions? So each idea or cluster of ideas in the future can be visualized. I call it an explosive exposition. So it uses the entire surface of the theater, deploying sound, illusion, and movement to bring the ideas to life before we do cut down versions for social media. I can't really tell you how it's going to look like because the way they're envisioning it is like a combination of Da Vinci's uh, engineering drawings and uh, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child Theatre production, which uses the surface of the theatre to project uh, elements of magic. So with that, the ideas come to life. So you might be wondering, uh, how can we experience it in the library? So besides this theatre, we're also thinking of something more tactile. So in our regional libraries, uh, which are the larger libraries in our, uh, in our country, we're thinking of using something more walk-in. So libraries are a great way to reach a lot of people. So they can host installations. So designers and thinkers have been thinking about all these future solutions, whether it's sustainability, whether it's inequality, they will build these solutions. So these solutions on future living and working in the post-COVID world will be in the library and you can walk into it. And we also have an idea to do with books because I love books, guys. And books can change the world. With that tagline in mind, books to change the world, where every book is an idea for a better world, we thought of creating a physical digital library. It sounds a little bit weird, but let me take you through it. So using this uh, picture from Aaron Khan, which is this wonderful artist, we thought of doing a library with actually books that are digital. So the books can be open up, and when the books open up, the book itself will have content, but it leads you to more content whether it's videos by ideators explaining their solutions or the Spotify playlist that tells you about resources and rich understanding because it's not just about the first encounter with an idea. It is also about deepening and widening your journey after that first encounter. Okay, I have one more minute left. I'm going to use this minute to do a little pitch. 
Uh, and I think it's very important that collaboration and Loida said it best, you know, really to pull people together, do partnerships together. So I'm making an open call to all of us to do something, whether it's this year or whether it's early next year, maybe when the pandemic has uh, eased a little bit. So this is my proposal, Global Tomorrow. Libraries and archives around the world. Libraries are connections. We are the connections. We are like the heart of every country, every major city that we go through. We are like a platform where major ideas and people flow through. So in 2022, can we all work, sisters and brothers around the world of the library world, to present a roundup of post-COVID solutions around the world? It could be called Brave New World. And in this Brave New World, every library, whether it's New Zealand, whether it's Fiji, will talk about how their country and the people in their country have come together to create these solutions for the future. Because let us not forget, COVID-19 was not a local crisis. It was not a community crisis. It was an international crisis. So with that in mind, I just want to say thank you to everyone. And I hope that we can have a nice chat later. But remember that um, libraries already have a place at the table. Let's make that table count and let's gradually move that, move that space to the head of the table. Libraries can be a leader in each of our countries if we play the right cards. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jean. That was inspiring. Um, now, I see that uh, Ramesh is waiting. First, before we uh, call on Ramesh to speak, I just want to say that, um, unfortunately, our keynote speaker, Luida, has to leave. She's online from New York in the middle of the night. So we are taking um, a compassionate view of her request to leave. And, she <laughs> and we quite understand. The only thing is that if you have questions for Luida, I would ask you, the, the remote audience out there, to put your questions into the chat and we will record them, we'll pick them up and we'll uh, try and get some answers for you later. Now, um, and also the other question I need to mention is that our friend uh, Ella in Fiji is still not online, I think. We'll bring her in. No, she's not. Um, we'll bring her in at the end if we can. No, the technician is shaking his head vigorously. It looks like Ella may not be joining us. Okay, uh, Ramesh, without further ado, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, let me share my screen and then. So hope you all can see my screen and I'm audible to uh, all of you. Thank Winston and other members of the organizing committee uh, for uh, inviting me. Uh, thanks uh, Tina and other colleague in Rasco. Uh, it is indeed a great honor to be part of this uh, very important webinar uh, on SDGs. So the topic which I'm going to speak is uh, how we have been doing some uh, dealing with this SDGs in India. Uh, so let me first share uh, some thoughts uh, regarding uh, how India as a whole, uh, Indian government has uh, prepared uh, to implement SDGs. Uh, we have taken it in a very, very, uh, very important manner. And even uh, we have developed uh, indicators, SDG indicator to monitor the implementation of SDGs in India. And some of the important uh, programs and policies uh, implemented by the government of India. Uh, when we talk about SDG3, we have a national health uh, scheme for poor people, about 100 million poor and vulnerable families. When we talk about goal four for quality education, uh, besides other scheme, we have uh, revised the education policy and new education policies being implemented. When we talk about goal five, gender equality, uh, we have a very, uh, a number of programs, but uh, uh, we have a, a Beti Vachao, Beti Prao, uh, Save the Girl Child, Educate the Girl Child, a very, very imminent program. Uh, in terms of clean water and sanitation, India has done uh, last uh, six years, uh, 
wonderful work has been done and uh, in particularly in rural area almost 90 million uh, toilets have been uh, constructed and uh, india is working with the with the aim to uh, declare open defection free in an entire, entire country uh, goal 7 we have a green peace india program and when we talk about good jobs and economic growth uh, a big movement was taken to open the bank account of about 370 million people, poor and uh, pe poor people and uh, the amount was directly transferred uh, through uh, digital uh, mode uh, online transfer a uh, number of improvement in terms of innovation and infrastructure digital india program is one of the very uh, huge program with, to uh, enhance the uh, internet connectivity and then uh, under this sustainable city and communities uh, about 100 smart cities have been uh, being created and uh, when we talk about goal 16 which is which is main topic of discussion today we have taken a lot of national project on digitization and creation of digital library and even court proceedings have been uh, taken up uh, now second thing before libraries i want to talk of uh, culture and sustainable develop, uh, development uh, sustainability is uh, something very much connected with the culture cultural heritage belongs to entire humanity not restrict to any community state or country a sustainable framework with all elements of global development is key to securing a bigger, better future for humanity. All stakeholders in archives, museum, libraries, and beyond work to ensure that primary resource of our heritage are sustained for future. It is preserved. Cultural heritage is key for inclusive growth. And when you talk about UN SDG and cultural heritage, there are a number of uh, UN SDG goals which are directly related uh, like 11.4 calls for strengthening efforts to protect and safeguard the safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. When we talk about target 8.3 and 8.5 of SDG 8, it promotes local production uh, cultural policies that need to be uh, uh, revised. And similarly, uh, goal, goal 10 uh, talk about various kind of uh, inequalities to be reduced. When we talk about creative industries and cultural infrastructure, uh, they, these are the valuable resources for generating livelihood, uh, especially uh, promoting art and craft. So uh, in this context, uh, uh, even Bowman role is very, very crucial. Uh, tourism is a big uh, uh, and rapid growing economic uh, sector, both within India and uh, region. So uh, a, a number of initiatives have been taken to promote. Now, coming back to uh, the the goal target 6 point, uh, 16.10, which is which we are talking about, uh, which is directly related to library, ensuring public access to information, and also to protect uh, fundamental freedoms. <clears throat> My strong belief is that uh, libraries are connected with every goal. It is not just uh, target 16.10 or goal 16, because uh, Libraries uh, need to advocate various programs and policies and need to be connected uh, and to, uh, to provide various kinds of resources and skills uh, and, and, and to achieving universal literacy uh, and providing access to research, information and data, and also providing various kinds of ICT support. Uh, like give you an example, when this Jandhan scheme was implemented in India, so a number of digital literacy programs were organized by the uh, because people were not aware of how to open a bank account, how to uh, uh, have ATM and uh, <coughs> credit card and debit card. So a number of digital literacy programs were also organized by the libraries in India. Now, when we talk about uh, universal access, uh, we are in uh, 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 tech, uh, this internet of things have made life uh, very, very different. And we are in the uh, world where uh, education has become uh, totally different. Uh, we are uh, talking about education 4.0. So we have to promote anywhere, anytime access to our resources. Uh, we have to think of providing personalized information. Uh, we have to develop information resources in a very flexible manner. So flexible delivery is uh, possible. Now librarians have to play a role of peers and mentors. Uh, see, we are not just service provider. Uh, we need to 
provide various kind of uh, mentorship and uh, various kind of uh, support systems. And uh, we have to believe that now students ownership uh, and user ownership is very, very important. So in this context, uh, Indian libraries uh, are doing certain things, but I don't have any hesitation in accepting that we don't have any big program or any very structured program in terms of uh, uh, advocacy to implement SDGs. We are part of various organizations. So in this context, certain kind of uh, uh, aims, uh, programs have been undertaken. When we talk about uh, reducing inequalities uh, or reaching the unreach, uh, in Indian Copyright Act uh, has been revised which provide facility to digitize any uh, any content for print disable so you you can serve them uh, uh, you can serve the neglected section of that society number of policies and program like uh, we have a big program on national mission for man manuscripts their manuscripts have been preserved uh, about 4.3 million manuscripts have been identified and preserved uh, we have been uh, promoting uh, various kind of uh, programs to preserve Indian languages. Uh, to promote open access, uh, a number of uh, initiatives, there are certain kind of uh, discussion that uh, we have been talking about one nation, one subscription model. There are a number of consortia have been uh, opened by the libraries where the access is being provided to uh, people uh, even, even uh, in the rural areas like uh, and a number of national digital library initiatives have been undertaken. This National Digital Library of India, which is having about 16 million uh, resources uh, and access is provided to the all, all academic uh, 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 researcher or any student or any faculty from any part of the world can access free this uh, resources available under National Digital Library of India. A India culture portal have been created and uh, uh, to provide access to those who are uh, uh, print disabled, uh, a very uh, important initiative, a, a Sugam Pustakale, which is an accessible digital library, have been created. Uh, it is free to uh, not just to the uh, people from India, but all over the world. Any, any person with a visual impairment can register and can have access to millions of books available under this. This is one of the Indian initiative in terms of uh, digital library uh, uh, created under this. Apart from that, uh, uh, libraries are trying to uh, help uh, implementation of various government uh, programs and policies. Uh, I basically believe uh, we are lagging behind in terms of public library system. We don't have public libraries which, uh, which uh, required in, in terms of number of, like we have 46,000 public libraries in India but we need at least 400,000 public libraries. So some work is uh, going on. Uh, it is uh, government is being uh, requested to think of having more public library system. Also uh, under uh, a scheme, uh, government of India is connecting all rural uh, villages uh, with fiber connect optical fiber connectivity. So we are expecting internet to reach uh, to these uh, uh, all, uh, all villages, uh, all, all uh, about 400,000 villages in India should have uh, internet connectivity in, in years to come. And under that, uh, it is being proposed that every panchayat, uh, state level, uh, village level panchayat should have a, a panchayat library. And uh, certain kind of, uh, certain states are having a state legisl library legislation to implement public library system. So some of the recommendation uh, which we have been giving to government to designate some important academic and research library as a public library. So this is the one area we are expecting that next 10 years in this goal, we should be able to enhance and improve it. So I think my time is uh, over uh, with these words. I would like to close it here. I want to thank Winston and all for inviting me and giving this opportunity to speak uh, to this uh, gathering and share my views on uh, SDG implementation in India and role of libraries uh, who are implementing SDG in India. Thank you, Winston. Thank you very much. To advise that, I think we have, uh, I'm fairly sure that we have finally lost our 
friend Ella from Fiji. Uh, so we can make her presentation available um, remotely or as an email attachment to people who, who ask us for it, if you haven't already seen it. Um, I know Ella has been following on the chat, but she just can't get a connection to get to show her presentation. So to Ella, many thanks for your willingness to participate. I'm glad that you could follow some of the proceedings and um, we'll catch up one day. Uh, in the meantime, um, if you have managed to see uh, Ella's presentation and you have questions, you can, you can still send them to us later, perhaps. Um, and also, Loida is in fact still with us, despite what I said before, and she will be available to take questions via the chat. You hear a rattling noise, which I thought momentarily was a mild earthquake. In New Zealand, when you hear a rattling in the room, you often think that, you know, you see chairs bumping around, you think it's an earthquake, it might be, or a truck going past. Okay. Now, we're going to move straight on to the question and answer session. And I'm going to ask Helen Heath from the Lianza office to... Uh, talk to us about some of the comments and questions that have come in on the chat. Now, obviously, Helen cannot read all of these and she cannot interpret um, anything which is not quite clear. So she will use her discretion and make a small selection of the comments and questions that she has seen. We have recorded all of them. We've downloaded them and recorded them. So we'll make uh, a better analysis later after this uh, webinar. Okay, Helen. Uh, kia ora, good evening everybody. Um, first of all, I just want to confirm there's been a few questions in the chat. Yes, this is being recorded and um, the recording will be uploaded to the Lianza YouTube channel um, uh, early next week and we'll be sending the link out to all the registered participants uh, via email so you will not miss out. Um, mostly in the chat, we're seeing lots of um, really positive feedback for the um, presentations. Um, Boris says, thank you for the meaningful sharing about impact and change of the role for library and librarians. Um, what else have we got? Um, and Ella sends her um, sincere apologies uh, due for her power failure, and she wishes very much she could have been with us. Um, Let's have a look. <laughs> Peter says, love your energy, Jean. Kia kaha. Thanks, <laughs> Jean, says Mamun. Um, your presentation is excellent. Really great ideas to talk about library past and present. Um, there was a question on Twitter um, about Jean's, let me just find it, about Jean's thread, um, worrying about um, data collection and ethics. Let me just find that. I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, what else have we got? Um, and lots of people asking, Jean, please keep in touch post-COVID-19 projects. Everybody sounds quite excited about that. Um, Thank you to all the presenters. So basically, a lot of thank yous from the crowd, and I'll see whether I can pull up the um, the question on Twitter. Sorry. <laughs> Um, Emma, Emma Cherie asks, um, Jean, um, she was really interested in the idea of the um, looking at libraries adapting the virtuous cycle as a business model and Netflix's recommendation systems. And she's wondering, um, this is interesting. I wonder what impact it would have on mining people's data. Would they only see their own interests and run the risk of looking wider? All conundrums that the social dilemma documentary touched on. 
So I'll maybe I'll leave that there and see whether okay. Jane would like to respond. Okay. Yes, hi, I'm here. Yeah, um, you are spot on uh, because it was a social dilemma that um, drew the connections for us. And I, I watched the not only the show, but also read books on Facebook, Amazon and Netflix and uh, the whole idea of Facebook's growth analytics. So I want to show you that whatever we are planning will not go in the, the direction because Facebook was at one stage about growth at all costs, including selling the data, going deep uh, into whatever you're doing in your computer and using that information to promote products to you. Uh, and that of course includes getting developers to access your data. Libraries are a force for good. So the data is used for your personal widening experience, uh, whether it's using algorithms uh, or using your user history. But it is not for sharing across the board to anyone else but yourself. So we're very, very strict about that. So I just want to assure, that, uh, assure you that that's what we're doing at, uh, at the National Library Board of Singapore. Yeah. Are there other questions? Yeah. I have a question. Um, possibly to Jean, possibly to Ramesh, uh, possibly to Loida. Now, I recall that in the presentation by Paula Eskett, uh, our New Zealand colleague who is sitting right here in the auditorium with us, the only one, uh, <laughs> she mentioned that in New Zealand, we, um, uh, the, the government, um, obviously, as, as every government does, uh, compiles a national voluntary review to the UN of uh, our national progress towards uh, the SDGs. And in fact, the Library Association here, the ANZA and many other um, civil society groups, academic groups and uh, industrial groups contribute to the national voluntary review. So my question is to the other speakers, do your national library associations also contribute to your national voluntary review uh, and how effective is that process? Can you answer that question fairly quickly or succinctly? Because I realised the answer could be um, very long, so I want you to make it very short. Uh, Loida, maybe, could you answer first? Yes, uh, this is a very important uh, question, an important document. Uh, unfortunately, in the United States, we uh, in the past, for the past uh, years, we have not had this type of relationship where the state, the, the government has submitted reports to the UN. We do have someone there, but now hopefully with the new administration, there will be a more official capacity and we will join, rejoin uh, officially, you know, paying dues uh, the United Nations. There is one office in New York City is the only uh, state or even city that has an office at the UN and it has more official capacity. And I'm in contact with them, I live in New York. And so in that sense is good, but I'm hoping that we get back on track. It's very important. Yes, that's right. It is very important. Thank you very much for that comment. Uh, Ramesh, can I turn to you now? Yeah, Vincent. Uh, Vincent, unfortunately uh, not. Library associations uh, do not have that kind of any discussion. But uh, UN Information Center in New Delhi, uh, in individual capacity with certain libraries and library association have organized certain events and discussion on these <laughs> topics uh, in which uh, various library professionals and uh, some uh, people who are from various agencies in government have participated. I was part of some of such discussion with uh, UN Information Center. Thank you. And Jean, do you have um, a comment on relations between the Singapore Library Association and your government for that review? Yes, I think we are working through the regional office. So you might know that the uh, IFLA regional office of Asia Oceania is uh, managed by the National Library Board. So together with the Library Association of Singapore, we work very closely on things like Library Map of the World. And the National Library Board then is a conduit to speak to government on all the issues that we want to work on. So for instance, the issues that together we have figured out, we work through uh, 5,000 volunteers at the National Library Board uh, to look at some of these issues and to create some solutions for them. Thank you. Thank you. And I would also like to ask um, Tina, our regional section chair, if she's online still, 
Does she have any questions uh, to the speakers? Tina, are you there? Um, yes, I'm here. I'm actually uh, trying to um, sum up. Um, but I was going to ask you to sum up later. I just yes. asked, uh -huh. wanted to know if you had questions for the speakers at the moment. Uh, yes, um, actually, I have a question about uh, uh, for Jim. Um, your uh, presentation is very um, interesting, and uh, you presented some very interesting ideas and creative ideas. So, in your review uh, view, the libraries. Um, the, uh, whether the technology can um, enable uh, the libraries to um, achieve the SDG goals in uh, innovative ways. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, Tina, I realized that um, libraries, everyone who's listening in now, all the librarians, all the libraries, we are at this inflection point of technology. Technology crossed with prices. So this was a point where libraries can be elevated. And I think that's why in Singapore, we've been um, using every occasion to tell the government that the library with technology, whether it's AI, whether it's AI through the algorithms to almost in a way to help society to broaden, to expand its view, to have expansive views of the future, as well as your own perspectives and your treatment of your fellow communities, or whether it's just to uplift uh, the population. So we have this plan that is called Digital Equalizer and Digital Elevator. So it's not enough to, to, to equalize, it's also to elevate everybody else. So having test labs with uh, tech giants and all that, getting people to socialize themselves with what's possible in this brave new world is something that I think uh, is possible right now for us to achieve. So even our collections, the ability to, uh, to use AI and technology to research as well as to uh, discover the collections so that more people can be involved in the telling of stories or the sharing of issues in a way that's backed by information. And to, to ask the library, that's always important. It's not just to give a point of view. Anyone can do that on Facebook. How do you do that in a way that's substantiated? That's the library's value. And technology now enables us to deliver that content and information to people in a targeted way and sometimes in a serendipitous widening way so that whatever is presented and brought into the global discourse is going to be richer than you ever was. Thanks, Tina. Thank you, Jean. Uh, thank, oh, thank you, Jean. Um, you mentioned AI. Now, we did have a, a question, a comment or a question on the chat, which uh, Helen has uh, reported to me. And it, I think it would be for uh, uh, Ramesh. The question was, uh, in your reference, in your Education 4.0 uh, proposal, it, what is the place of AI? Is it, is it given a, um, a space in that program? Yes, uh, because uh, the new project uh, education policy is having a lot of focus on learnings, uh, uh, art integrated learning, uh, lifelong learning, and also uh, there, are, there are recommendation to uh, create various kind of knowledge, digital knowledge repositories. And uh, uh, there is a lot of focus on uh, student-centric uh, facilities, uh, which, 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 uh, which doesn't, because this pandemic has uh, really given a lot of lessons to everyone. So now a uh, lot of discussion and focus to uh, implement AI in uh, various of education technologies, but directly uh, this education policy, which is being uh, implemented soon, uh, has a lot of uh, restructuring of Indian education system. According to the, uh, like uh, after 35 years, this new education policy has been uh, revived, uh, developed. So in this, uh, uh, there are a lot of, lot of focus on uh, different uh, stages of education learning, like. Uh, uh, primary education has been divided in different stages. So technology is going to play a key role in this uh, new education policy. And hence, we are expecting uh, a lot of new changes in years. Okay. Thank you, Ramesh. Uh, we have two more questions. Um, 
first of all, there is one uh, question just come in from Shaharima Parvin. Um, how can academic libraries promote the SDGs to their patrons? Who would like to answer that question? Yes. Loida. I'll take that. Um, we were just talking about that today at the ALA All Membership Meeting virtually. And um, there are libraries that are providing services and um, guide, library guides and curricula to help uh, their students in academic libraries to understand finances. And over here, students sometimes incur in large debts uh, to pay their tuition. And so through that, we can uh, promote the SDGs because we are helping, uh, for instance, with goal 10 to reduce inequalities. But we also discuss um, book clubs, the Sustainable Development Book Club. And that's being carried out by uh, all types of levels of education, including academic libraries. And there are forums that academic librarians are uh, doing with different faculties from the universities to talk about the different issues that we are experiencing, climate change, poverty, um, and uh, hunger. There are some students that are experiencing hunger as well. And so there are many opportunities. There are forums, the students actually talk to each other and present to each other. And they also present at community events, open events for the entire uh, university community. Thank you. Um, I have a question actually for our New Zealand speaker, Paula. Uh, you, um, let's see, how shall I rephrase this? Um, to introduce the question, uh, we had uh, a welcome from Anahera Morehu, who is the, um, le the president of our National Library Association in New Zealand, Lianza. She is indigenous. Uh, she spoke in Māori. Um, Paula, in her presentation, presented herself briefly in, in Māori. She gave her mihi. Um, and Luida, you also said that you have Indigenous um, background from the Taino people in the Caribbean. This uh, inspires me to ask, do you, the speakers, uh, the panellists, feel that Indigenous people in your country feel engaged by the sustainable development goals, or do the goal, put it another way, do the goals actually address the needs of Indigenous people in your countries? Who would like, maybe, um, Paula, I could ask you to address that question. No? Right. Paula said the SDGs in New Zealand have been translated into the Maori language by the Victoria University of Wellington. So that is a pretty positive uh, development. Um, I'm afraid that uh, Anahira had to leave, so she can't comment on that for us. Um, does one of you want to comment? Do you have translations into... Uh, vernacular languages in your countries of the SDG program? Or is it all in the major world languages, for example? Ramesh. But, oh. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, we have developed a SDG toolkit, which has been translated in... Uh, we, India is having about 22 official languages. And uh, major languages are Hindi and... Uh, yeah or some other languages. So this toolkit has been translated in, in Hindi and uh, other languages mm. to make it easy to understand uh, for the various people. And most of our schemes uh, under this SDG are uh, implemented at local level. Uh, and the people who are, who are implementing, they understand the local language and dialects. So uh, it is... It, it's basically on a, a local level basis. So that kind of issues are not there because all the, all the uh, translation of work in the local languages to make them understand and uh, like take example of when we talk about health, national health schemes. So mm. it is implemented at state level and in the state uh, who are implementing, they, they very well understand the local languages. So it, it, is, it is very easy for them to who are in who are speaking in different vernacular languages 
So being a being a country with so many languages and dialect, uh, implementation of such thing in local languages and other things, we are really very well prepared for it, and uh, we, we we do it very systematically. Okay, thank you, like Ramesh. Add, Loida, you I would like to add. Oh. Yes, I would like to add that um, by going uh, to the United Nations meetings on the SDGs. I've been in contact with the uh, indigenous group. It's one of the nine major groups that are from civic society that work at the collaborate also with eFlight that is in one of those groups. And um, they are promoting translation of the documents in uh, different languages, but not only that, they are also uh, being very progressive in terms of uh, bringing concerns uh, from the indigenous groups from around the world so they are taken in account when we uh, the uh, goals were established, and they are very a very progressive and a very wonderful group to work with. Thank you. Yes, and I regret that Ella has not been able to join us because I'm sure she would have some interesting views on that question as well. Uh, Paula has just suggested to me that we can ask that question to our. Indigenous Library Association and report the question, uh, report their response back. Um, because Lianza is not the only association in New Zealand, that's the major national um, library association, but we also have Te Ropu Whakahau, which is the Maori Information Workers Association. So we will get some views from them on that question. And uh, Luida, maybe you'd like to know the answer to that from them as well. Um, now, there was another question uh, that Helen has picked up from the chat. I think this will have to be our last question. The question is, how can libraries in developing countries with limited resources, financial resources, contribute to achieving the SDGs in their countries? That's a large question. Um, maybe, well, who would like to answer that? Can you give some examples of how uh, sm uh, developing countries, large or small, could uh, help their libraries or how the libraries in developing countries with limited financial resources can help the national effort towards achieving SDGs. Uh, I will, Loida? I will start uh, briefly. I recently um, gave workshops to the INELI cohort in South Asia and India, and it was uh, wonderful because they shared how they are partnering with NGOs to bring information for uh, farmers and for um, women entrepreneurs that are uh, seeking to have some type of revenue. And that in itself is, in, is uh, to contribute to the SDGs, to the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, we have a decent work goal eight and goal 10, reduce inequalities and so on. So partnerships, through partnerships, that's the best vehicle for countries, mm -hmm. small or large, to contribute to the SDGs. Thank you. That's a very, very good insight. And I'm sure that some of our friends in the Pacific here, members of our INELI uh, cohort, perhaps, or the leaders of INELI in the Pacific who are listening, they would probably uh, be interested in your comments as well. And maybe we, I know Alison Doby perhaps would be listening. Um, right. I think that was our last question. Unless there's one more, Helen? No. That's it. All right. So thank you very much to all the panelists for your contributions. Now I'd like to ask Tina to make a final few um, observations, comments quickly from a professional regional IFLA perspective uh, before we close. Tina, are you still there online? Uh, yes, I'm here. Can I share my Mark? screen? Yes. Mark, can she see? Yes. Yes. You can. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, thank you all the speakers for your very uh, inspiring, uh, insightful uh, uh, talks. Um, I um, 
I have managed to uh, capture some of the uh, ideas from your presentations. First of all, I, um, uh, Noida, thank you for giving us an overview of the global efforts of the library's um, contribution um, to the SDG goals, SDGs. Then Paula, uh, you gave us um, uh, different examples of how uh, public libraries can uh, contribute uh, to SDGs. Um, and I like your um, presentation title. My strength is not an, as an individual, but as a collective. So this is the essence of, all, uh, of collaboration and partnership. Jim, your uh, presentation is very innovative and very interesting. You highlight um, the evolving, evolving roles of libraries and give us some insights on in how technologies can help libraries to um, achieve the SDGs. Uh, Ramishi, uh, thank you for your presentation. You um, touched base on uh, the different aspects of um, of um, SDGs related to libraries, that is uh, safeguarding cultural heritage, universal literacy, access to information, and ICT. This is also the standpoints of IFLA from the very beginning. So um, from your presentation, I try to um, capture the following ideas. Uh, first of all, um, the libraries are facing um, unprecedented challenges, in particular, um, the challenges caused by uh, COVID-19. Um, access to information among all SDGs is a key and is a driver for all development. So libraries have demonstrated roles and impact achieving different SDGs. Um, so uh, for example, um, uh, Paula gives some, uh, share some success stories um, in public libraries um, in, um, in the area of zero hunger, good health and well-being, gender quality, uh, reduced inequalities, responsible consu consumption and production, peace, justice and strong institution, etc. Um, so another point uh, is advocacy uh, is important and can be done from where libraries are in your local context. So you don't have to be a big library. Uh, as a small library, you can also do something. Uh, it, it doesn't matter way, whether you are rich or poor in financial resources. As uh, Noida has mentioned, uh, partnership um, can help you to um, work with other libraries to uh, overcome the financial barriers in uh, support of SDGs. So library can uh, make use of different uh, promotional materials uh, which are available um, on uh, some library um, association, for example, ALA, EFLAS, uh, websites, and uh, other um, uh, and available from other libraries. So you, are, you can customize those promotional materials uh, into your local setting and change uh, in the library uh, ongoing. Uh, libraries need to work together um, among themselves and also reach out to other stakeholders, uh, such as governments, non-NGOs, um, to make an impact on the policy making. And libraries need to think out of box and empower um, themselves with technology and to achieve the SDGs uh, in an innovative ways and to demonstrate their impact. Um, and also libraries are beyond of books, space and facilities. The essence of library should be community building. So community building is a way forward. So thank you very much for all the speakers. I really, really, uh, have learned a lot. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Tina, especially for your last point. That's something that I see in my work in, in the uh, Pacific region, community building, uh, libraries down on the ground at the grassroots in the bush, um, where libraries and huts, for example, um, may have poor facilities in terms of infrastructure, but the community is strong. And that's important. Okay, now it's time, uh, it's nearly time for us to close. I would like to thank you all for your contributions from near and far. And I would like to call on Paula again uh, to, um, to close the proceedings with uh, a farewell word from the Library Association. And we are actually on time, although unfortunately we lost Ella from Fiji. <laughs> we could have run over a little bit longer if she had been here, but as it is, we are on time. So, Paula. Thanks, Winston. And before I do the closing karakia, I'd just like to say that many of the comments coming through on the chat at the moment are thanking you for your role in hosting tonight, organising tonight and facilitating tonight. So thank you. Okay. Uno here to Paul, to Paul Fere Marama, Tomo kia te ao, te ao, fatu tangata. Tatai ki ronga, tatai ki raro, tatai ahuro. Humie, huie, tākie. And for those of you um, who don't know what I have just said, the gist of it is from confusion comes understanding, and together we are one united. Kia ora and good night. Thank you.